Here we have a game in Game Lab that allows you to have buttons that do four different functions. The first one allows you to grow when the mouse is pressed on top of a certain button. That's a scale. Uh, this one allows you to tint when you click a button, change a color of your sprite. And this one allows you to rotate on a mouse click. And this last one allows you to reset everything back to the beginning. To start making this program, I've initialized all my sprites. So these two lines here create the blob and put them where I want on the screen in the X and Y positions, and then give him the, the image that I want him connected to. Blob. These two lines make my grow button. I'll go ahead and run it so you can see them. So this, here's my grow button. These two lines refer to my color change button. These two create my rotate button, which I've called spin here. And then this last one actually gets three lines of code. Um, the first two create them like all the other ones. This last one makes them a little bit smaller because originally uh, it was a larger image than the other ones. And then uh, the last thing that you see here is I have a draw loop, something that repeats. And this yellow guy here actually puts all these sprites on the screen. So if I didn't have that one, you would see nothing. Put that one back. And now everybody's in their right position where I want them to be. So the first thing I want to do is uh, I want to check if a mouse has been pressed for each one of these. So I'll need an if inside the draw loop so that it can keep checking if something has happened. And uh, there, there are two ways to do this. I'll show you the easy way first. And that is just uh, mouse is pressed over. If the mouse is pressed over, and we'll start with this, uh, this first one, which is my grow. So I'll just type in grow. That's the name of the sprite up here. If mouse is pressed over grow, then I want this blob guy to grow. So he's a sprite inside of my sprites. I'm going to find my sprite.scale. Where is it? Here he is. And he's not called sprite, he's called blob. So blob.scale is going to equal. Well, if I just wanted him to grow at a certain number, like three times his actual size, I could put a solid number there. Let's try that. But you see when I press again, nothing really happens. So it's only working once. Another way to do that is to make him grow incrementally with the counter pattern. So blob.scale equals itself equals blob.scale plus some number like 0.5. This time, when we press over the grow button, it will continue to grow, which is kind of cool. You might be growing a little too fast. We can do 0 0.25. Yeah, I like the way that looks. Okay, so this one is complete, and this if statement controls the growing button. I could pull all those blocks again, or I could just copy this one. Copy the entire if statement by highlighting over it and saying control C and control V. Now this time we're going to control the change button. So this guy here. So I'll say if mouse is pressed over change and we'll get rid of all this. This time we're going to use the tint block inside of sprites. So let's see where's tint. Here we go. And again we're going to change blob. And in my example, I made him red. This time, we'll make it green just for a variety. Now let's reset. Still grows. And now he's turning green. I like that better because it matches the button. Okay, so now we need to control this one that's going to spin. So I'll copy this if again. Say if the mouse is pressed over spin. And this time we don't want to change the tint, we want to change the rotation. So let's look for, here we go, spray rotation. The blob's rotation, we're going to make
make that again we'll use the counter pattern so it's going to be equal to his rotation plus one or if we want to spin faster two three let's try that still grows still changes colors now he's rotating now you can see because he's not a perfect circle he's rotating a little bit strangely uh, that's because we don't have a background in here to cover up all the previous versions of him. I think it would be better to see what I'm talking about if I switched him to a different image that wasn't circular. Let's, uh, like if we changed him to a slice of pizza. So all my sprites are the same, I've just changed the image. But now, when I rotate it, you'll see all the previous pizzas, which is not really what we want. Although it kind of looks cool. Um, so I'll stick him back to the blob. And you'll see that the same thing is kind of happening around the edges there. It might be a little hard to tell, but down here you can kind of see a background. Anyway, I want to I want to get rid of that problem. So uh, all you got to do is inside the draw loop, add a background, which is under drawing. And you can make it a pretty color, you can just leave it white. And now you can see when I rotate my pizza, hiding all the other ones with the white background. Okay, enough with the pizza. Okay, that's working, that's working, that's working. The only thing that's not working is this reset. This is the most complicated part, but there's, it's still pretty easy. We need one more if. Mouse is pressed over, so I'll copy and paste that one. And this one is if it's pressed over reset. This time we have to control it. We have to set its scale back to the original. We have to set its rotation back to the original. We need to set its tint back to the original. So we're doing three things inside of this if. Uh, let's make sure we call them all blob, or we'll get an error. Okay, an original scale was just one. Its rotation as original would be zero. And its tint at original, I think, is null. No tint at all. So let's reset it. Make it big, make it green, make it rotated, make it back to normal. Now, I mentioned earlier there were two ways to do this. Uh, what I was referring to is, like for example, when I press grow, he's continuing to grow. You might not want that to happen. You might want it to only happen, you know, one little bit so that the person would have to keep clicking. So the other way that you can do it that's slightly more complicated would be to take out this mouse pressed over and exchange it for something a little more nuanced. So we'll grab a math and block. That way we can check for two things at the same time. Uh, this time we're going to check if the mouse is over the sprite. So we're checking if the mouse is hovering here, even if it's not clicked. And then um, we're going to check if the mouse went down. So. I'm going to hide these tools because it's going off the page. Uh, but whereas before we're, we could only che check if the mouse was pressed, here we're going to check if the mouse uh, went down. So that means if I hold my mouse here, it only counts as one. I'll show you that in action. So uh, whereas this one continues to rotate as long as my mouse is down, uh, this one that we, that we just added, the double conditional, um, when I click and hold it, he only grows that one time. And so I would have to lift off the mouse and click again to grow another time. So it really just depends on what kind of game you're trying to create.